In this video I'm going to show you how to make your Netduino blink the onboard LED when you push the button. Alright, so what we want to do is we want an LED and we want it to blink when we push a button. So we're going to need two variables. First we're going to do the LED. We'll do new... no. This is Visual Basics. So we're going to dim LED as a output port. All right, then we're going to go ahead and make one called button. And this one's going to be an input, right? There's input port. So we've defined our variables, but we can go ahead and continue setting them up here on these same lines. So this LED, we're going to be a new instance of output port. So this output port um, method is coming out of these references. Um, and it's going to handle all the, the heavy lifting. We just use it to uh, control this port. All right, so first we have to do is type pins dot. So we've got the Netduino pins here. You can see that we have onboard LED, or you can select some of the other pins. And IntelliSense says, hey, put a comma. Now we're on to the initial state as a bool. It's going to be false or true. Let's do false. All right, now a button. It's going to be a new input port. We have a few more options here. First, we're going to start with pins dot. So we can get to the Netduino pins. And here's onboard switch one. Next, we have a glitch filter as a bool. Well, we don't really need the glitch filter. We're just going to turn that off. Comma. And then the resistor mode, we can either pull up or down or disable. We're going to go ahead and pull up. Just going to click on that guy. All right, we've got those done. Let's do a while loop. We'll do a do while true enter. And it knew that we were doing this loop, so it added that. Let's um, get out our LED dot. Write. So we're going to write to the LED state. And um, I clicked off of there, and it, it's angry. It says, hey, we need a state as a bool. So I'm going to going to write this LED state directly to button. Ah. Well, it doesn't really like that. It says button. Can't really convert it. Well, there's some attributes of button we need to get to. So button dot read. Notice it says read open close parentheses as a bool. So that's what we wanted. So we want read open close parentheses. All right, that's it. Let's go ahead and run it. All right, mash the button. It turns the LED on. All right, so for extra credit, let's do a few extra things to this blink. Um, for one thing, we can get right, rid of this do while true, and it will actually work just fine. Just do do loop. All right, what if we wanted the button to revert? We want to push the button to turn the LED off. Well, all we have to do is type not and that will reverse this button read state all right um let's also add something here and i am not really going to discuss it a whole lot i think you can figure this out <clears throat> all 
All right, we've created a couple more, and we're using some different pins instead of the onboard stuff. Um, I'm putting that one back the way it was. Um, the way my button works up, hooks up, this is convenient. I'm going to save it, debug it. I have added an external button from ground to pin 3, or that's pin 2, and an LED from 13 to ground. Notice that the LED, the shorter pin is, is negative, longer pin is positive. All right, what if we wanted a button to latch? Well, the real way to do that would be to use a interrupt port and a event handler. So what we'll do is we're gonna take our little button. We wanna turn it into an interrupt port. And this is a new interrupt port <clears throat> we're gonna pick a pin so let's do pins dot onboard switch one and it's asking us for the glitch filter let's just do false all I have to do actually is hit comma and it will go ahead and select that one for me port resistor mode pull up I'm gonna hit comma and then we're going to select what edge we want this interrupt port to trigger on. So as you're pushing the button down, <clears throat> it can trigger when the button goes down and when the button comes up, or both, or so forth. So since we're pulling it up, I want to get the low edge. So once you mash down the button and that uh, it pulls the uh, voltage down, it's going to trigger this interrupt mode. So I'm going to go ahead and do a end parenthesis. Now we want to go ahead and add a event handler. So let's do an add handler. And we're going to say button, which is the uh, variable right above. We're going to do dot on interrupt comma <clears throat> address of now we're going to define the name of our new handler and we're going to call it button change all right so now uh, visual studio is telling us hey something's going on here it says it's not declared it may be inaccessible down here it says, hey, do you want us to generate a stub for you? So let's go ahead and click that. And here it's uh, created a subroutine for this button change. So whenever this interrupt um, event happens, it will execute this code right in here. It's as simple as that. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this part up here. Um, we don't actually need the while true. You can always just do a do loop. Let's just copy this for the time being. Your main uh, module does need a loop here because what will happen is the code will execute and it'll run down to the end and exit and it won't do anything else. But if we do a thread sleep and then we do a timeout dot infinite. What that does is the code will execute and then down here it'll just uh, sleep infinitely um, waiting for this button press. Alright, one more thing I would like to do is um, I would like a variable for my button here. So um, I want it to be accessible from this button, but I don't want it to disappear whenever this uh, subroutine stops executing. If I put it right up here, 
before the main and outside of this subroutine um, everything can access it and it, it'll be like a global variable so let's just do a public variable called button mode let's do it as a bold So it's also good to go ahead and set the initial state of this variable. So it's going to be false whenever we start this thing up. All right. So in our subroutine, <clears throat> let's do an if then else statement. I'm actually going to do if then else end if. All right. So if button mode equals false, then we're going to, then we're going to turn that button on. And notice that um, I have misspelled button mode. So let's just say that we're going to set it to true now i've misspelled this in several places you notice when i click it highlights them all I'll show you something cool here i can do b t n and then if i mouse over this little red uh, thing under the mode it will say hey do you want to rename all of these and it will rename all of the instances that i have named wrong and voila, they're all fixed. All right, so by button mode's true. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and grab this LED. And what I want to do is I want it to be true. So we're going to turn it on. All right, so it's angry. It says, hey, LED is not declared. Well, that's because it's in this routine and it can't be seen by this routine so we're gonna have to move this let's grab it and we're gonna just stick it over here okay so we're happy so if the button mode is true we're gonna say button mode Let's set it to false. We're also going to turn that LED off. All right. Let's go ahead and give it a try here. Let's save it and debug it. <coughs> All right, so now it's pretty cool. When you push it, it'll latch on or latch off. And the particular way I did it, it, it doesn't do when you push it down, it's on the button up, which is pretty cool. If you uh, play with the edges, you can have it happen whenever the button goes down, or whenever the button is released, or you could have it do it, you know, when you push down and when you release, which would be pretty annoying. Let's do that just for the heck of it. All right, let's go up here and say, first we have to stop debugging. Instead of low, we want interrupt edge both. And obviously these all have their uses. It depends on how your hardware is wired up and it depends on how you program this event handler to run. So now the event handler runs when I push it down and when I let it up. So that's actually, um, I guess that's exactly like our button press, but it's doing it in a completely different way. <laughs> 